Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is Jacob Toman. Welcome to Toman's Tome. Today's discussion is titled, Sermon Leftovers, Jesus Quoting of the Psalms. Yesterday we began our summer study on the Psalms. You can click here to view yesterday's worship service and the introductory message on the Psalms. Later on this week, I'll be sharing here on Toman's Tome a few suggested Psalms to read this summer as we study the Psalms together. And here at church, we'll have printouts of those available for you on Sunday as well. Hard copies if you want to take them with you to guide your reading of the Psalms this summer. We won't have the ability to preach or teach through every Psalm, but we will have time each day to open our Bibles and to seek out the treasure trove of God's Word in the Psalms. The suggested Psalms will be organized into short, medium, and longer readings. So if you've never read through the Psalms before, or maybe it's just been a while since you've read through the Psalms, this should help you gauge your reading and your time commitment in reading through a Psalm. I was laughing with a couple of different members of our congregation yesterday. I would hate to say, hey, just start reading the Psalms, and maybe you've never read the Psalms before, and you crack open to Psalm 119, which is legitimately the longest single chapter in the Bible. I don't want to uh, scare you off with that. I want to encourage you with your reading of the Psalms. So by organizing things into short, medium, and long, I hope you'll be able to manage your time and what you're able to read on any given day. So today I'd like to focus on a single statement that was made during the sermon yesterday. The statement was that the Old Testament book Jesus quoted from the most was the Psalms. Today I'll give a few examples. First off, Jesus quoted the Psalms as a reference point for the history of God's faithfulness to his people. In John 6, we're told of the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus was teaching a crowd the following day, and as he asserted that he was the bread of life, he referenced how God had provided manna for the ancient people of God in the wilderness by citing Psalm 78, 24. Second, Jesus quoted the Psalms to illustrate his own relationship with God the Father. In John 10, after Jesus taught that he was the good shepherd sent from the Father, a gathering of opposition to Jesus were ready to stone him for blasphemy. Jesus reiterated the sacred truth of Scripture that cannot be ignored, and then he compared himself with that same principle. He could not be ignored as God's Son doing the work of his Father. To make this comparison, Jesus quoted Psalm 82.6. Thirdly, Jesus referenced the Psalms during the Last Supper with his disciples. In Matthew 26, as Jesus shared a meal with his disciples prior to his trial and crucifixion, he was joined at the table by his betrayer. Judas was present for this meal and ate with Jesus. Not only this meal, but for at least two years prior, Judas and Jesus had been companions, sharing life and food. Jesus made reference to Psalm 41.9 that one of his trusted companions at the meal would betray him. Fourthly, Jesus quoted the Psalms in his arguments with Jewish religious leaders. On one occasion, while Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he quoted Psalm 110, a psalm which spoke of the mighty ruler appointed by God to rule in victory eternally. We are told of Jesus teaching a crowd to their delight in Mark 12, 36, and 37, and we're told of the dumbfounded, speechless religious leaders in Matthew 22, 41 through 46. Fifthly, Jesus quoted the Psalms during his intense struggle prior to his arrest. After sharing a meal together, Jesus and some of the disciples went up to the Mount of Olives. While in a garden called Gethsemane, Jesus referenced Psalm 42, verses 5 through 9, and Psalm 88, 3, saying, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. We are told of this in John 12, 27, Mark 14, 34, and Matthew 26, 38. Jesus also quoted the Psalms while dying on the cross. In the midst of his anguish, Christ on the cross cried out to his Father, quoting Psalm 22, 1, and Psalm 42, 9. We're told of Christ's cry in Matthew 27, 46, and Mark 4, 15, 34. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Seventh, Jesus quoted the Psalms when speaking of Jerusalem regarding his own return. When Jesus was teaching in the temple in Jerusalem, he gave a great many warnings and proclamations. One of his warnings was in relationship to judgment coming upon Jerusalem. 
Jesus quoted Psalm 118.26 when speaking of his eventual return in Matthew 23.39. Eighth, Jesus referenced the Psalms along with the Law and Prophets as being prophetic of him. I end our list with this vast summary statement by Jesus in Luke 24.44. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. At the time of Jesus' speaking and the Gospels being written, the Scriptures were not organized into Old and New Testaments. For first century Jews, the Scriptures had various names of groupings for different books. The first five books that today we call the Pentateuch were referenced here by Jesus as the Law of Moses. The minor and major prophets that make up the final half of our Old Testament and our Bibles today were simply called the prophets, and also would have included the historical books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles, along with Ezra and Nehemiah. The Psalms were often called the Songs or the Psalms. Here we see in Luke 22:44 the resurrected Jesus sharing a meal with his disciples and teaching that the whole of Scripture, including the Psalms, had future promises waiting to be fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Jesus himself not only took an earnest approach to the Psalms, he saw his own earthly life and ministry as the prophetic promises of the Psalms lived out. This list that we've looked at is far from exhaustive, right? It was just eight little quick points and quick references and quick quotes. But there are even more quotes and references Jesus made to the Psalms throughout the Gospels. I hope even though this list is not exhaustive, it encourages you in our study of the Psalms. Jesus grew up with the Psalms. He quoted and referenced the Psalms. He saw his life as a fulfillment of the prophetic word of the Psalms. If you want to read more about Jesus and the Psalms, then there are two great resources that helped me out in writing this particular discussion piece. The first is a resource that breaks down the various quotes of Jesus from Old Testament books, and of course includes the Psalms at the top of the list. You can find that first piece by clicking on the first link. The second piece looks through some of the most memorable moments of Jesus' earthly ministry and examines Jesus' practice of quoting the Psalms. You can find the second piece by clicking here. The second piece also includes several different quotes from Acts as the uh, disciples and apostles looked back on Jesus' life and testimony and then continued to quote from the Psalms. I look forward to our upcoming study throughout the summer in the Psalms and later on this week with the suggested reading plan. Thanks so much for joining us today at Tome and Stone. I hope you've learned something new and exciting right here. See you next time.